Hello everyone, my name is Jared Owen and today I'll be taking you on a tour through the parts of a computer. Now if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with a mouse, keyboard, and screen. That's not what we're going to be talking about. Instead, we're going to talk about what's inside this case over here. Now the one you have at home or at school or work might be slightly different, but the general idea should be the same. As for most computers, they'll have a side panel that will slide right off. There might be some screws though. Once you get it open, it'll look something like this. Again, this is simplified quite a bit. The real thing will have a lot more detail. First up on our tour is the motherboard. This is the component that connects the different parts of a computer together. As you can see, there are many different slots connecting into the motherboard. Some of the components are required, while others are just optional. On the left, you'll see connectors actually sticking out the back of the computer. When you connect into those, you're connecting directly into the motherboard. The type of the motherboard that's in your computer determines how advanced the other components can be. The CPU plugs in towards the top of the motherboard. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. You can think of it like the brains of a computer. Most, if not all, of the thinking will happen right here. Modern CPUs can even do multiple things at one time. Even though it's quite small, it's usually the most expensive piece of the computer. Now as it runs, it can usually get pretty hot. So you'll find it buried beneath what they call a heat sink to draw away the heat. Then there's a fan on top which will blow the air away. These two working together will keep it cool. The graphics card's job is to display everything you see to the computer screen. Not all the computers are actually going to need a graphics card. Sometimes the CPU can display everything you need. The graphics card will be required if you want to do more advanced things like a video editing program. You might also hear the graphics card being referred to as the GPU. This stands for Graphics Processing Unit. These two tiny pieces over here are the RAM. This stands for Random Access Memory. Many times we just call it memory. It holds the short-term information that can be accessed very quickly. The more programs you run at once, the more memory you'll need. If the power ever does go out, all the information that is in the memory will be lost. This is why you should save often. The hard drive is where the long-term storage is. All your files and installed programs will be stored here. This is different from memory because information will be remembered even after the computer is turned off. Information on the hard drive is slower to access than memory, but it holds a lot more information. When you first open a program, its contents are loaded from here onto the memory so that the CPU can access it as quickly as possible while you use it. Once you save a file, it then becomes written on the hard drive as long-term storage. The optical drive is just a fancy way to say CD, DVD, or Blu-ray drive. This used to be the best way to install new programs onto the computer. Since much of the information is now accessed through the internet, these are becoming less and less common to see on computers. Last but not least is the power supply. All the components that we've talked about must have power in order to operate. In an actual computer, you'd see a lot more wires coming out the power supply, but for the sake of this animation, I decided to leave them out. That concludes our tour. I hope you've learned a bit about computers. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.